So hey guys, it's Eli, and today I will be talking about unemployment. Hopefully most of this information is just a refresher for the AP exam, and maybe I'll teach you something new. So to understand the whole concept of unemployment, it's really important for you to understand some of the definitions that go along with it. So the most basic definition of an unemployed person is a person who is actively seeking work but is not currently employed. So unemployment occurs when there are people who are willing and able to work that can't find jobs despite searching for them. So I wouldn't count as unemployed because I'm not actively looking for a job because I don't want one. I'd rather not do anything. So that is unemployment. And an employed person is obviously someone holding a job in our current economy. And that job can either be a part-time job or a full-time job. So all the employed and unemployed people in a nation make up that nation's labor force. And to find that nation's labor force, you simply add up all the unemployed and employed people. So labor force is important under the topic of unemployment because it's a part of two major formulas in this area, the labor force participation rate and the unemployment rate. The labor force participation rate is a percentage of the population 16 or older that is a part of the labor force. The formula for the labor force participation rate is you simply take the labor force and divide it by the population 16 years or older in that nation. The next formula you need to know is the unemployment rate, and the unemployment rate is a percentage of the people in the labor force who are unemployed. And to find that, you simply take the number of unemployed people and divide it by the labor force. The unemployment rate is important because the unemployment rate is usually a good indicator of how a nation's economy is doing. But, however, it can be misleading because the unemployment rate does not take into account discouraged workers and marginally attached workers. A discouraged worker is a non-working person who is completely capable of working, but they simply have stopped looking for a job. So, for example, during the financial crisis of 2008, there was many discouraged workers because they thought the job search was way too long and hard of a process that they just stopped looking. Marginally attached workers are workers who have had a job in the past, have looked for a job in the past, but aren't looking anymore for a job uh, for other reasons other than the job market's current situation. For example, they might have had a job, looked for a job, but are now going back to school to earn their degree. They would count as marginally attached. Also a condition called being underemployed. Underemployed workers are workers who wish to work more hours or are simply overqualified for their job. For example, this could be a part-time worker who wishes to be promoted to a full-time worker to get more hours and more money. So for those reasons, the unemployment rate can be a little misleading, but it is usually a good economic indicator of how we are doing as a nation. And as of March of 2017, our unemployment rate was at 4.5%, which is really good. Some of you may be thinking, why is an unemployment rate of 4.5% good? Well, that's because there are different types of unemployment, and there are types of unemployment that are simply unavoidable. First type of unemployment is called frictional unemployment, and this is unemployment due to the time workers spend in job search. And this type of unemployment is inevitable because there's always job creation and job destruction, and there's always new entrants into the labor force. So people are always going to be searching for jobs when new jobs become available. And frictional unemployment is not bad for the economy at all. It can actually be very good for the economy because a nation's economy becomes more productive if workers take the time to find jobs that fit their certain skills. So the next type of unemployment is structural unemployment, and this unemployment arises when workers lack the necessary skills required for the available jobs, or simply there are more people looking for jobs than there are jobs available. So an example of structural unemployment could be when machines or robots, say this transformer that my brother so conveniently had in his room, is more productive and efficient in a job, say, as a factory line worker. So they take over those jobs and leave humans unemployed in those certain jobs. And the last type of unemployment is cyclical unemployment. And that is a result of deviations of the actual rate of unemployment from the natural rate of unemployment. And to dumb that down, that basically means contractions and expansions in the business cycle. Examples of cyclical unemployment occurs usually when there's a recession and people get laid off from their jobs. Another type of unemployment that some economists count is seasonal unemployment, which occurs during a change of seasons. People get unemployed or laid off during the change in seasons. For example, carnival workers getting laid off during the winter time. 
So seasonal and cyclical unemployments are bad types of unemployments. It's completely normal when people are unemployed simply because they're looking for a job, say in frictional unemployment, but it's not okay when people are getting laid off from their jobs simply because we're going through a recession or even a depression. So that brings up the topic of the natural rate of unemployment, or NRU for short, and that is frictional plus structural unemployment, and it usually fluctuates through 4 to 6% in the United States, and that's what we're in right now. We're at 4.5% unemployment rate, and that means if we are between 4 and 6%, we are full employed. The reason that the natural rate of unemployment can fluctuate from 4 to 6% is because the NRU can vary due to changes in the labor force characteristics, the labor market institutions, and even government policies. So an example of a change in the labor force characteristics could be an increase in the labor force. In the 1970s, when the baby boom population was first entering the labor force, the NRU rose to uh, above 6% because everyone in the baby boom population was entering the labor force at the same time and were searching for jobs. It was, it was frictional unemployment, they were in job search, so it raised the NRU. So another example of a variation in the NRU could be from a change in the labor market institutions and that could be caused by an increase in structural unemployment from labor unions and even minimum wage. So it's not just Megatron that causes structural unemployment. Labor unions and minimum wage can lead to structural unemployment because it could lead to more jobs being demanded than employers are willing to supply. So the last thing that could fluctuate the natural rate of unemployment is government policy. Government policy can impact frictional unemployment, let's say, if they are offering a more generous unemployment benefit. More people will be frictionally unemployed because they have the money to conduct job search longer with that generous unemployment benefit. But it could also reduce structural and frictional unemployment if there are training programs and employment subsidies in place. So that is the natural rate of unemployment or NRU. And now the last thing I'm going to show you guys is where to find NRU and unemployment on those graphs that we so dearly love. So the first type of graph where I'm going to show you where you could find unemployment and NRU is in the simple supply demand graph. In the graph you see on your screen, the economy is in long run macroeconomic equilibrium. And when the SRES and AD meet on the LRES, you could say the economy is in full employment, which means it's in an unemployment rate at NRU. You can also find the unemployment rate and the natural rate of unemployment on a graph exhibiting an inflationary or a recessionary gap. On a graph that exhibits an inflationary gra gap, the economy is operating above full employment, so the natural rate of unemployment is actually greater than the actual rate of unemployment. And on a graph exhibiting a, contract, a contractionary or recessionary gap, the economy is operating below full employment, so the actual unemployment rate is above the natural rate of unemployment. So the other type of graph where you could find NRU and unemployment is on the Phillips curve. The point where LRPC meets the horizontal axis is actually labeled NRU, and the horizontal axis on um, the Phillips curve is actually labeled unemployment rate. So it's pretty easy to find the unemployment rate on these particular graphs. Anything to the right of the LRPC will have an actual unemployment rate above the NRU, and anything to the left of the LRPC will have an unemployment rate below the NRU. In the SR Phillips curve cost push inflation graph, actual unemployment is greater than the NRU, and that is the same in the SR Phillips curve depressed economy graph. However, in the SR Phillips curve demand pull inflation graph, actual inflation is below NRU. So that is unemployment on graphs and where you could find unemployment and NRU, and that's unemployment for you guys. And to wrap everything up, um, to be unemployed, yes, of course, you don't have a job, but you have to be actively searching for one. Uh, to be a part of the labor force, you have to be either employed or unemployed. It doesn't count discouraged, marginally attached, or underemployed workers. Um, there are also three different types of unemployment, uh, cyclical, structural, and frictional. Structural and frictional make up the natural rate of unemployment, which fluctuates between 4 and 6% in the United States for reasons uh, because of changes in labor force characteristics, labor market institutions, and government policies. And you could find unemployment and NRU on the ADAS graphs and in the Phillips curve graph.
All right, so that's unemployment. I hope to see none of you unemployed anytime soon. I would hate to see that happen. Uh, like and subscribe to my channel down below. Thanks, bye.